Nora, what's the nervous system? <laughs> it's a system of neurons that conduct impulses throughout the nervous system. When it is at rest, it means it is not transmitting an impulse. Neurons are made of dendrites, a cell body, and axons. Sodium, the sodium potassium pump opens up, and then sodium starts going in, potassium starts going out, and so the inside is positive and the outside is negative, and that makes the impulse go through. See? That's impulse it. is going through. But once the impulse passes, then the sodium and potassium channels close. Well, in a and then potassium goes back in and sodium goes back out, and it repolarizes the neuron. And then once it reaches the dendrite, this is, I mean, not the dendrite, axon, this is the axon, your impulse goes along until it finds a part of the axon that's not covered in myelin. And once, it's not covered, once it finds that part, then it's going to try to jump across to the next dendrite. Myelin is the white covering, the white sheath of white cells that covers the axon and prevents ions from flowing through when they're not supposed to. Okay. Now, so, as I was saying, the pulse is going, and look, there's no myelin here. So, it, it's going to try to jump across, across the synapse to the next dendrite. But, there's no way for it to jump across. So, what the near, what this axon does, it sends neurotransmitters, like little chemicals, and they go across the synapse. Which diffuse across the space and then right to the next neuron. Yep. Okay. And then the next neuron. The neurotransmitters enter the next neuron. So now, here's the synapse, right? The impulse here wants to go across the synapse to the next dendrite, but it can't because it can't just like leap. So what this can do is, this axon is going to send out neurotransmitters and they float across and they touch this and then this dendrite here depolarizes and once it depolarizes it sends the impulse there are three different types of neurons there are sensory neurons there are motor neurons and there are interneurons <laughs> I touched Robbie I punch him in the hand. Because he has sensory neurons, he can feel my punches. <laughs> I am moving my hand. My brain fires my motor neurons, which makes my hand move. And lastly, he flinched because he saw it with his sensory neurons, his eyes, and it sent to his brain, which sent signals to his motor neurons which made him go like this because he wanted to protect his eyes. So Another interneurons, <laughs> that too. So interneurons are like the people who go back and forth between the motor neurons and the sensory neurons because they don't like talking to each other. The next part of our was a reflex that never goes to your brain. This is not very... Flinching is a reflex. <laughs> Alright, a good example is the chicken wing, right? The, hot, the buffalo wing. I bit it and I bit down to the bone because there was no more meat. So my sensory neurons in my teeth went down to my spinal cord, went to my brain, which told me there was no more meat and nothing left to eat. So my brain sent a message back down my spinal cord to my hand to throw the chicken wing. <laughs> and that's what happened. Good example, Robbie. Thank you. Too bad Lord doesn't have an example. I feel smart. Yeah. Another thing, inertia is a property of matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Okay, the next part of our lecture is the central nervous system. Nervous system is divided into two parts. The central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And the peripheral nervous system is, divided, is further divided into two parts. The somatic nervous system and the autonomous nervous system. The somatic nervous system is responsible for movements you can control, such as moving my arm, that's somatic. But the autonomous nervous system, as you might be able to grasp from its name, means it's automatic, you don't control it, it's involuntary. There are, the autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. The parasympathetic nervous system is the one that's usually running. It controls just the regular heart rate, just, uh, I don't know, like I'm sweating right now, that's part of the parasympathetic nervous system. <laughs> the sympathetic nervous system activates only in times of duress or uh, stress, danger, etc. They control adrenaline glands, the increased heart rate, things like that that cause you to be more aware of your surroundings and also to have a higher survival rate. The most important organ of the body, arguably though, is the brain. The brain is divided no, into two. three parts. The cerebrum, this the cerebellum, four. and the brain stem. The cerebrum is composed of the top-ish portion of the brain. Uh, it has many folds on the surface called the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is what makes us much more intelligent than other animals. Some animals don't even have a cerebral, cerebral cortex. Some animals do. But our cerebral cortex has many more folds than other cerebral cortexes, which is why we are more intelligent. Hey, the cerebrum controls the most of what we consider to be most important of the brain. They control our voluntary movements, they control our intelligent intelligence, speech, <laughs> behavior, and other such things. The cerebellum uh, is kind of the lower portion of the brain, in the back. It controls balance, posture, and coordination, which might not seem that important, but without balance, posture, coordination, I would not be able to talk. So yes, I The brain stem controls involuntary movements. It's composed of the, the pons and the medulla oblongata, which I'm not pronounced that right. Um, and as I said, it 